There we go. All right. Welcome, friends. I'm glad y'all are here today. We're small but mighty. And I'm very excited about our topic today. Kara is going to talk to us about stepping out of our comfort zone. Who loves to do that? Do we love to do that? We really don't. But do she I is going to share. Maybe if I have friends. <laughs> it is easier to do if you have friends. That is 100% true. Yes. Will you go with me? If you'll go with me, I'll step out of my comfort zone. <laughs> There you go. Come yes. <laughs> so I am excited about this. So why is this topic near and dear to your heart, Kara? What, when was the first time God kind of nudged you that it was maybe good mm, yes. to get uncomfortable? Yes. I would say it's been uh, probably more than 20 years where I was first challenged to get out of my comfort zone. And the way that that even happened was at the time I was um, just newly graduated from college and I went on to staff at the church that I had been attending and was um, working with a college ministry as well. So um, was working with that college ministry based out of that local church for the purpose of reaching um, the university campus, um, you know, everything from evangelism to Bible studies, discipleship, all the things that would go on in a college ministry. That was, um, my full, my full-time job at that time. And we were seeing the Lord do marvelous things and just really, um, just like an exciting new, you know, just, um, a newness where, you know, the Lord is just has his hand on this work and he's mm -hmm. doing a beautiful thing, encouraging these students and people are coming to, um, coming to Christ and inviting others and all that stuff. And so, um, the pastor though, called me into his office, uh, one day to, you know, just as was normal to talk about what was happening within the college ministry and everything. And he started but with all the things that he was pleased about and was so happy to see God doing and everything. Thing, but then he said, there's one thing that I want you to do more of. And I thought, what? I said, what? And he said, I want you to place yourself in a position where you need to rely upon the Lord more. And I, that just um, set, you know, that just hung in the air for a moment. And that sounded kind of terrifying because already mm -hmm. I felt like this was all new. This was all new territory that I was stepping into. Um, and that feels scary to think about. Yeah. I'm going to choose to put myself into a place where I'm relying upon the Lord even more. So that means I'm not going to know how something's going to go down. I'm not going to mm -hmm. necessarily have the answers of what to say. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be in control of this situation anymore. And he wanted um, just to, to see me knowing mm -hmm. that for all of us, it's in those places that we grow, that we depend upon the Lord, that his glory really shines through because it's not in us. It's not of our own strength or our own wisdom or anything of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that is where that, you know, nudge first, yeah. first was said to me really in an impactful way, again, more than uh, 20 years ago and has been something that has kind of stood with me, stayed with me ever since. Yeah. <laughs> so did he, I'm just curious, did he give you ideas of what that would look like? Or did you instantly know, oh, I know what God's wanting me to do? Like, what mm -hmm. was your response to that? Yeah. I, I mean, I think probably it's been a long time, so I can't remember any, uh, any specifics. I'm sure my response is as it would have been just, uh, okay. Like, yes, you know, like I'm going to, yeah. um, to, to do what, my pastor is telling me, especially in terms of like, I knew that was a very biblical uh, thing. Um, yes. <laughs> and so in spite of it being uh, scary, I think for, I think it would probably looked like conversations, you know, reaching out, um, just getting out of, you know, we're like the common phrase we always say is, the comfort zone, like getting out of where yeah. I am comfortable and those kinds of conversations where I kind of knew, you know, we all kind of like our pat answers or I guess, you know, to <laughs> put it in terms of like, even with our writing, like maybe a topic or something that we're most comfortable with, you sure. know, and while that's, that's a blessing and that's, that's great to have a go-to, you know, I think the point is always that the Lord wants to expand our, 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 our boundaries of what we are mm -hmm. comfortable with, because then not only is it going to have more reach, but it's a lot, it's causing us to rely upon him more. 
And that's always the goal. That's always one. It is. (laughs) (laughs) It is. And I loved that younger you knew instantly that that meant you were going to do some things that you maybe didn't feel equipped to do, or you weren't going to know that outcome. And you recognized, oh, this is going to, this might be scary. Yeah. But I'm willing to do it. So Do you have some examples of what that would look like to, to say yes to getting uncomfortable with the Lord? (laughs) Yes. So definitely like you uh, brought out some of those things right there on campus, part of my day-to-day job that kind of looked like a shift in some of those things. And then not too long after, uh, with the same, the same church was, um, was going to on a mission trip to Africa, to Togo, Africa Mm -hmm. on the Ivory coast. And they really wanted me to go because they speak French there. And my mind, was French. I had studied abroad in France for part of uh, my college time. And and I love French and they really wanted me to go. Um, And so, you know, long story short, that all got worked out and I, and I, and I did go, and that was a huge step out of my comfort zone. Just even going, you know, I had been to a couple countries in, in Europe on short-term mission trips at that time and everything, but this was definitely the most, um, a, a different kind of location and culturally speaking that I had been to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I just fell in love with it and, and the people and everything like that. But one, one day, um, the pastor there said to me, um, I want you to teach the women in French. And we had had two translators. We had the French translator mm-hmm. and the um, specific dialect translator. And mm-hmm. so I, I said, no, like we have these translators. I said, I don't, I don't want to mess up the word of God. Like my, my desire was really, I didn't want to fumble something as, as, as precious and holy, obviously as the scriptures. Um, and of course we all know, you know, in the university setting level and level, you're not learning words like redemption <laughs> and <laughs> forgiveness and like, like all these things, you know, <laughs> that, um, I would want to share from the Bible. I, I didn't know I hadn't learned and, um, and he would not back down. He was insistent that I taught uh, the women in that church in French. And so again, wow. I said, well, I said, okay. <laughs> and the passage that had been on my heart was um, the potter, you know, and, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know. I don't know potter. I don't know clay. I don't know any of these words. And, um, but I had a French Bible. And as I was reading the French mm-hmm. Bible, you know, I was able to, I, like, obviously I, I knew from context what the the words were, um, and what they meant and everything like that. And, and I was able then to, um, to develop a message and share with them (laughs) in in, in French. And, um, and, and I would say that was the stepping stone to what my pastor had said to me a couple years prior, putting myself and maybe even the Lord knew I needed that for this moment. Right. I, you know, the Lord sees it all he knows. And so, um, So that is when I really grew in my God confidence. Like you had said, uh, Melissa, like when you don't know the outcome and you don't know what's going to happen in that moment, am I, am I going to uh, shrink back and, and say, say no, or am I going to rely on the Lord and say, okay, like, I don't care if I fail, I fail. I don't care. I, like, Lord, there is no failure in you. You'll redeem it somehow, but I, I will be willing. And so that, that was the moment then. Um, but then it, it didn't end there. The next day um, <laughs> on our free time, some of the, uh, some of the younger people, you know, they wanted to take me and, and a couple others around and show, show us around and we're walking and we're, we're talking in French. And, and then I, and I, and I said something about how everyone is a, what I was trying to say, everyone is a sinner, but what I said was everyone is a fisherman because those two <laughs> words, like they're exact, I mean, it's like such mm-hmm. a light difference of an accent of like those words. So I, so they just started laughing and laughing and laughing, but even that was such a moment of, um, growth and coming out of my comfort zone, because I realized that would, that probably down deep was what I was, my biggest fear the day before was, messing up the word of God and, and saying, you know, that always the esteem for 
God's word is number one. But number two, what if I fail? What if I'm embarrassed? What if they're laughing at me? Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was there, even if not, you know, on the forefront of my mind. And here they are, and and they weren't laughing meanly. It was all in front, the jest and everything like that. And I realized, you know what? This this isn't that bad. (laughs) If anything, (laughs) like the one thing that there is no um, language barrier to is laughter. So if anything, we're we're, we are you know bonding. Yes. Well, and (laughs) what a gift too, right? Like in that moment of vulnerability, right? Of being obedient, using the French, going, being in this place that God has taken you to, that you were able to connect with those women over the Word of God, but Mm -hmm. also over laughter and mistakes. Right? There is so much community built. Yes. When we operate from a place of weakness instead of strength. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm struck too by how you had these godly leaders in your life too, who are seeing something in you and saying, you're doing good work. I need you to go deeper. Like that's it. Yeah. Go you deeper. need to, you need to trust the Lord a little bit more. Why don't you go teach these women? in French. Why don't you stretch yourself in ministry and rely on the Lord a little more? So I love all of that so much. And clearly that has impacted Mm. your walk with the Lord. So how has having that instruction first, but then that new mindset, how has that instructed your service to the Lord? Yeah, such that's a, a great question. I think um it really has formed so much of it. Um, you know, after after that period of time being there with that church and I got married and moved to New Jersey and we, you know, were serving in our uh mid twenties. Um pretty early on I started teaching women's Bible study. Um and you know, was the youngest one doing that and had to rely on the Lord knowing, okay, I don't have a lot of life experiences that some of these women have, but, but I have God's word and I've seen him Mm -hmm. transform my life and I know what he's done in me. Um, and so God, my confidence is in you. And then, um, not long after that, when I became a mom, um, you know, I was really craving that fellowship with other with other Christian moms, and we didn't have a moms group at at that time. And so I went to our leaders and asked um, if they if we could look into having that started. You know, and they said, "Yes, you can start it." And I said, <laughs> "No, that's not what I'm trying to say." <laughs> you know, um, at the time I had a two year old and a six month old, and mm-hmm. um, and and I said, "I have not even potty trained a child." Yet, like I, I, this is like the uh, one demographic I especially can't speak to <laughs> is mothers. I haven't been through much of it myself. And they said, no, we really feel like um, you're supposed to start that. And so again, I did not equipped, as you said, I love that you brought that up so early on, um, not feeling that equipped in myself at all, knowing my, my lack, but knowing mm-hmm. the Lord makes up for our lack when he's calling mm-hmm. us into obedience. Right. And so that was an area that I served in for 10 years was leading that, wow. that mom's group and was able to see it through as my own kids aged and how that, you know, um, just kind of allowed us to reach different ages and stages for the moms. So I feel like, yeah, it's, and and it's, it's always, that's just always something that has been part of my life. (laughs) It's so interesting to me listening to you and connecting those dots that there was equipping, right. And and Mm. preparation, you had studied French and you were in the right place, you know, early younger, you working in this church and, but that was external equipping. Right. And you had children and you saw a need that was external equipping, but all of these people who are, (laughs) who are in your life and saying, but let's go a little deeper Mm. was God's call for that spiritual equipping. Yes. For for you to do something a little bit more with these physical equippings that God had already given you to say, okay, let's let's see what that looks like in my hands. And I just love that. Love that. I just love that you had people encouraging. We'll say encouraging because it sounds much nicer than pushing, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> they were encouraging you yes. to step into these these zones of of mm being uncomfortable, but it's just so beautiful. You can see God's hand 
and every yes. every step of that journey. Yeah. Yeah, you really can. And I think that's such a privilege that we have as women who want to use our words, right? Whether through spoken Mm -hmm. or written, that we can be that one to come alongside someone else. And it doesn't even have to be someone younger in age. Um, It can be just a a peer or someone younger in the Lord or whatever that looks like. And, and to encourage them to uh, put, put their, put your hope in the Lord, trust in him, take that step out. You know, we see that time and again, that kind of principle uh, for, of encouragement from the scriptures. And I, and I just think yeah. it's such an honor, like you said, that we can have people like that in our lives, but whether we did or we didn't, that we get to be that kind of person for someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So is that your heart and your passion um, for encouraging people to step out of their comfort zones is to, to help other people or what's your, I would say what's that- your heart behind that? Um, yeah, I would say that's part, that is part of, um, my part of my passion for sure, um, is in that vein of encouraging people to trust in him. Um, you know, there's, there's that balance of, like you said, there was an equipping there's the external and the internal. And I love how, how you, how you said that and differentiated that. And, and I think when we're talking about, you know, in um, ministering to someone in whatever way it is, we, we do want to handle the word of God rightly. And I think a lot also is important in terms of, um, of someone's personal life and character and all that, meaning we don't want to throw someone into something uh, too soon. And yet we need the discernment to know, when it is the Lord's um, call and nudge um, and prompting, right? Because Mm -hmm. at the same time, we don't ever want to get to that point where we're just looking for professional Christians or, you know what I mean? Where it's just, they've arrived, they have it all intellectually. uh, I don't know, you know? So yeah, that is, that is a passion of mine to, to encourage that, to just um, look for the one who, it it is, is just, um, just needing that little extra encouragement. I can see myself, you know, in, in them Mm -hmm. oftentimes where they're, they're just not sure of themselves and they're, they're feeling Mm -hmm. that, you know, timidity and uncertainty, but the Lord wants to lift their eyes to him and what he can do in a life. So, yes. So I actually get to have, I have the privilege of meeting with a group of young women leaders um, Mm -hmm. within our church and that we get to talk about things like this. And one time, not too long ago, um, this idea of comfort zone came up and we realized every single one of them was being asked to do something that was outside Mm. of their comfort zone. And when we looked and when we thought about um, impactful accounts in the Bible or some of our favorite people that we look to in the Mm. Bible, they all had that moment of where they were called to take that step of obedience or a step of faith or whatever we want to call it. But when we look at it, it really was Mm -hmm. getting out of their comfort zone. And so we are in very good company. And I think it's something (laughs) that, um, that we should, you know, expect. Um, I think we can kind of go on one or of two extremes, either think, well, this is like just, you know, our comfort zone, like it's, it's something that we hear so often, maybe that phrase, right. That we don't really um, look into what it, what it means for our hearts. And when I studied it, what I realized is there's a very real spiritual application for each and every one of us. And so that's yes. what we'll be looking at more on Thursday. Can't wait. For I'm that. excited. Yeah. Well, and I don't remember exactly how you worded it, but one of the things you said earlier was stepping out of your comfort zone was one of those pivot points for you to deepening your relationship with God, mm-hmm. that it is in that place of discomfort that we really learn the character and nature of God and his love for us too, yeah. his protection and his provision. And you're so right in scripture. You constantly see that as God is yeah. calling his people to do his work, that there there's a moment where they, they have to shift. So do you have a favorite example Mm -hmm. from scripture of someone making that shift out of their comfort zone? Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really do. And, and maybe we could even, um, if we have the time people can share, cause I'm telling you when I, when we were 
when I was talking about this topic with the young uh, women leaders, they were throwing names out that I was like, wow, I hadn't even thought of that. I hadn't <laughs> even thought of that. So I feel like my one, my first favorite who I'm going to mention is probably one of the most obvious, but I, I just, I just love him. I think I can just relate. And that's Peter uh, yes. when he was called to step out of the boat. Right. Um, I think there's just that hesitancy on his part and with good reason. Um, but I, I do, I, I, I can relate, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. of just uh, being, being hesitant and just, mm-hmm needing. I just, you know, God is so good and he's so gracious. He knows what we need. Every time I've needed that little bit of extra encouragement. And even as you pointed out throughout my life, um, God has given it to me in some way or another through another person, through his scripture, through just that nudge within uh, the Holy spirit. Um, but so I, I, I love Peter for that reason. And then the other is, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons um, I really am drawn to her is because that wasn't her plan to carry the Messiah. I mean, she had a nice plan and a nice life, I'm sure, kind Mm -hmm. of envisioned of what that would look like with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet she was greatly called out of her plan, of her vision, of of her comfort. Um, And yet it brought forth the, the Messiah and how her, her response that I'm the maid servant of the Lord, like, that's just what I want my response to be. Um, not, you know, wondering about the outcome, how's it going to work? What's it going to be like all of those things, but just that simple, I'm the handmaiden I'm of the Lord. I'm your servant God. So whatever, whatever it is, but recognizing too, that, um, you know, with Peter, he, he, he experienced that blessing of stepping outside of his comfort zone. Mary, I'm sure she did as well, but it blessed so many others. I mean, the savior of the world through stepping out of the comfort zone. And so again, in both of them, I kind of see why I want to be always willing to step out because Absolutely. I will be drawn closer to my savior and know him better. And Lord willing, it will serve as a blessing to others. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I love the picture. So it's so funny that you said, Peter, I instantly thought of Peter, but I thought of the second half of his story, actually, where Jesus has forgiven him Mm. for denying him. And he's like, Peter, do you love me? Peter's Mm. like, yes, I love you. He's like, feed my sheep. And Peter's like, Mm. okay. Like that God is continuing to draw him out and say, continue to step out of your comfort zone. It's just, it's so, so beautiful. And in both of those examples, God is right there. Mm. He is not asking them to step into nothing. Yes. He's asking them to step toward him. Yes. And it's just so beautiful. I love those examples. I'm with you. If we have time, I totally think we should throw out some other examples of that from scripture because I think that would be fun to tease out. But yeah. Um, so clearly we're all writers here. Yes. So how, what does this have to do with us as writers? How do we apply this stepping out of our comfort zone and walking with God to our writing life? Yes. Well, I can speak for myself and, um, and, and I think on some level it will all, I I think we're probably all in the same area. Many of you are much more seasoned writers than, than I am. The writing aspect is, is a newer part of uh, my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's just very fresh in, in my, in my, in my memory and something that I'm, I'm still trying, you know, always learning like the, the next thing, the secret to this, the secret to that, how, the, yeah. how, the how to's and, and I can find it so easy to, to make that, that the goal or that the, the aim. Um, and then just want to stay there. Like I've learned it now I got it. And now I, now I can stay here. I mean, usually I, I don't know that I ever say I've really learned something <laughs> to the point that right. I got it, but you, you get where I'm going with that. Um, yeah. and so I, so, and, and so much of that, they're very good things and they're very yeah. blessed things. And we get to benefit from one another's wisdom here in this community alone, how the, the schedule, you know, how to make a schedule, how to stick with the consistency, how to, how to do this, how to do that, which are all things I'm eager to, to learn and grow in, mm-hmm. in myself. Um, but I can find 
at least my tendency can be to latch onto that and then be comfortable there and not be willing to then step out. And so I think it's to say all of these very good things that we are learning and that I am so yeah. grateful that we get to learn together in and benefit from those those who, um, you know, are that one step ahead and have that wisdom right. from us. I, I'm so, so grateful, but um, the challenges don't stay stuck there. Don't just stay right. there you know, and so, yeah, on Thursday, we're going to look at some, some more of that in, in depth and, um, why it can be hard to then yes. step out, especially when you've worked so <laughs> hard to get in. I'm like, I just, I work really, I'm just working really hard to get into the comfort zone. And now I, I have know. To leave it. <laughs> yeah, we do. And we, we do get comfortable and it's kind of nice and it feels peaceful and, and you've alluded to this, but there's not much growth in the comfort zone. And so there has to be some kind of stretching and pruning and shifting to allow us to grow as writers. And that's true in our spiritual walks too. So I'm excited to hear what you have to share. So do you remember when your solo teaching is later this week? It should be Thursday at one. Um, Thursday at one. Okay. I believe it's the same time. Um, Checking. While you're checking, I'm yeah, going to read a couple of the I comments. I have 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. Thursday Perfect. at 1. Thursday at 1. Space said she really appreciated the encouragement that it's it's not how sufficient we feel or how f- prepared we feel. It's that God's going to work through us. So that encourages her and her Bible study and teaching Bible study that God is faithful. And then Kathy quoted you, <laughs> Lord, mm. there's no failure in you. You will redeem this somehow. So yeah. we don't have to be afraid of failure. I mean, look at Peter, right? Yeah. Epic failure, right? Mm-hmm. Denying Christ, but God mm-hmm. redeemed him. Yes. And that failure, which is, um, Keld is asking one Eastern standard time. Yes. Oh, Eastern okay. standard time. And Melissa, we're, I was reading Space's comment. So regarding the redeeming that you just mentioned, was that Peter you said? Yes. Yeah. And that's so funny. I told you right before we got on how I had just, I just got home from uh, my church teaching women's Bible study and we're in acts and Peter was a big part of, of what I had just mm-hmm. shared and that redeeming um, because, you know, here he is in chapter four, standing before the council of right. these mighty and wealthy and intellectual and powerful people. And yet he's proclaiming the gospel and he's standing so firm in the same one who had just denied. And now he's declaring, uh, uh, you know, and, and, yes. and it is, and that's when they go on to be like, you know, who are these uneducated ordinary men? Right. And they note because of their boldness that they had been with Jesus. And I think yes. that that's the, that's the gift that we get to present in our words is, is mm-hmm. Jesus. And so um, I was talking with someone after who had been, um, you know, kind of getting some pressure to, to, you know, appear a little bit more educated or this or that. And, and, but, but she has been transformed by Christ. And Mm -hmm. so we were, you know, reminding one another of that right there in Acts 413, they were ordinary, uneducated, but they had been with Jesus. And I said, you know, Paul chose to lay down his words, his persuasive speech so Mm -hmm. that the power and the glory of God could be seen. And so, um, yeah, I just love that you were talking about Peter and I don't mean to be taken off track, but he is one we see he was in continually placed in those, um, places of discomfort. And yet the difference was Jesus difference was the empowering of the Holy spirit. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's, we could talk about that all day. I feel pretty confident, not just Peter, but the whole whole thing, but (laughs) But I think that this topic resonates, right? Because we all know what it feels like to be stretched out of our comfort zone. So we do have extra time. So those of you that are here, um, number one, do you have questions for Kara? And then number two, did you have somebody that popped into mind from scripture that is an example of that pivotal moment where God is calling them out of their comfort zone into something deeper. So does anybody have a question for Kara or a biblical example that they want to share? I have some, but I'm going to wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love what space said, um, space, when you said you can do the same thing from a place of dependence, um, or, or not. And the outcome is so different. I, I agree mm -hmm. so much with that. Yeah. I really love the example of Gideon and mm -hmm. how God gives him a new identity at the place of calling him. And he's like, Oh, you mighty man of valor. Well, he's yes. dressing wheat in the wine press because he's scared to death, you know? And I just yeah. think it's cool. God, um, how God told him who he was in his sight as he was calling him to do something crazy. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that too. And that when I was thinking about Peter and his head and sea, I was thinking of Gideon too, <laughs> how we can relate mm -hmm. to Gideon. Right. And yet God is so gracious and, you know, just meets him right where he is. Find such comfort in that. Yeah. Anybody else have an example or a question for Kara? I definitely think any prophet, anybody who's called to be a prophet, anybody who's called to be like the least bit visionary in their quest, I think the only way is the only way to be confident with our insecurities is that we go with God, like whatever, like whatever that is. And so when I'm reading all the Old Testament prophets and in my yearly reading and I'm just like, oh man, not again, here we go again, you know. And they've got to say all these bad things. They've got to do all these, but you know, horrible things for the people, but then they, they're, they're protected, you know, mm -hmm. but they're totally out of their company. Why are you making me do this? Please don't make me do this. God, you know, they beg, they say, please don't make me. And he's like, no, go, Love that. go do it. Yeah. Good. And okay. how, <laughs> oh, go, no, go ahead. Say so okay. Moses takes that a step further and says, can't you send Aaron or somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i'll have some suggestions here's another yeah. resume I'll just, ask, just take him instead right. and then aaron ended up being a total pain in the butt <laughs> <laughs> you know. oh wow yeah yeah i agree with you all that's so great and even with those prophets you know it, it even that even encourages me or challenge and challenges me as well as like when we do step out of our comfort zone, like where are we going to find our comfort when we're not in the, in the zone, right? Because even many new upfront, like you're not going to be listened to your message isn't going to be received. Like it looks like their ministry was a complete failure. Right. Mm -hmm. And that can be a place where we can be tempted to find our, our comfort in is the risk, how receptive people are to our message or how much did it resonate or how well liked was it? Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But here they were, they were called out and they, and they pretty much, I would say, stayed out <laughs> like they never were able to get comfortable right because yeah. they weren't really received but they found it in obedience to god and mm -hmm. that's that's the key for us too and yeah. for moses i love that example too that's kind of I kept, uh, okay go ahead space. So that's that's kind of how peter opens his first letter so those who reside as aliens scattered throughout pontius galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia and just thinking about how like that's kind of the the realm that we're supposed to live in is not mm -hmm. to ever be too comfortable on this planet because that's not the kingdom that we belong to you know that is so true mm -hmm. but, i was reading and mark the other day i want to talk about esther but one of my favorite mm -hmm. like tiny little stories in the gospels is where god where jesus heals Y'all correct me. I think he was a leper and he's so thankful and so grateful. And he's like, Jesus, can I follow you? Can I come with you, please? And Jesus says, no, I, I need you to go back. I need you to go back to your town. And, I, and he was an outcast in his town. He was a leper and now he's healed. And it was a super pagan town. And now he's got to go back and tell people about Jesus. I'm healed. And I mean, what he's like, but you're my comfort and you've healed me and this is so great. And I want to follow you. And Jesus is like, I love you so much. And I did heal you, but I healed you for you to go back. And it's just like, oh, I think that yeah. is just such an example of, of that reliance on God, but also in your, com you know, outside of your comfort zone. Yes, he's healed. What a gift. But that healing had kingdom work attached to it. Like, yes, 
but follow me in this town and I've got to go, go on and do some other stuff. And that always just cuts at my heart. I'm like, oh, I get that. I just want to be with Jesus too. And I just want to <laughs> like be where the healing resides, but you want me to go back to these hard places and, and represent you in those places and, and how hard that is. But I think of Esther because she had position, right? She's beautiful and she's a queen and we think, oh, then everything's fine. But but every step of her journey was challenging. Mm. She is, you know, competing against all of these other women to be the queen. It's, it's a pagan king. It's not a, he's not a Jew. He's not one of her people. And, and then it's fighting for her people at the cost of possibly her life. I've got to go approach the king and say, what? And she was young and that God was doing on something on such a huge scale, not just in her, but for his people. And it's just, that always gets me to just, yeah. he is so faithful to take care of his people and to love them and to equip them and to be with them. Mm. But the work that he asks them to do is so hard. The work he asks us to do is so hard. And there are seasons, I think, where we are a little bit more comfortable and things are a little easier, but it is a season. It does not last very long. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, I, I think of it almost as, um, you know, mothering or parenting, like, you know, pretty early on, you realize I'm just never going to be comfortable. Cause as soon as I learn this season, this yeah. stage, they're, they're on to the next one no. <laughs> and you realize, okay, Lord, I guess that's, that's the point is that I'm going to be dependent upon you for all of yeah. my days, all of my life, because I, I just want to get in that season and just coast, but that would be detrimental, you know, to coast. Yeah. I need to be in a place of reliance upon you. And do we really want to do any of it without him? Do we really right. like, right. there's the fleshly part of me that says, yes, I do, but no, I don't. I really right. want him, you know, with yeah. me. But yeah. when my kids were little and now they're not little, they're like, you know, college age, but I've always said it never gets easier. It just gets different. Mm. You just move from phase to phase to phase to phase and there's easier things and more difficult things, but it's right. always challenging. Right. That's right. Yeah. I always said that it got, it got more profound as the kids got older, you know, mm. the, the little, the little hurts became deeper hurts or the, you know, the, the little problems became deeper problems. So you had to, you had to expand into the realm of how much more profoundly you needed wisdom to go forward. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm curious. And if anybody doesn't have an answer, that's okay. But where in your writing life right now are you uncomfortable? And it gets quiet. I know. I think space <laughs> wants to say something, right? Space. Uh, uh, I I'm going to a writing workshop this weekend. I don't know if I, how many of you guys read my prayer request or, um, or know what's going on, but this weekend I'm going to a writing workshop, um, led by Ali Fallon and Don Miller, um, outside of, or in Nashville at, Don Miller's like private residence, like he built like a writing retreat center. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the, it's not a cheap workshop. It is not anything that I would have um, splurged for, except for that it was kind of obviously the Lord's leading. And, um, and so my husband's request was for me to uh, have the book ready that maybe I could pass it off to them. Um, to maybe help me get it published because I've got mm -hmm. the book basically it's done. Um, I I've done as much to it as I can do apart from professional help, but I don't have the email list. Um, and so that's like my one big hang up with getting a literary agent. And so um, on one hand, I'm really excited. And on the other hand, I'm very terrified because um, trying to be that person that gets the book into their hand is not uh I, I don't want to, I don't want to be awkward and, um, and unloving about it and assume that like, that they want to, um, to do me any favors, even though I pay them a lot of money to go assume. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but that's not what I'm paying for, right? Um, and um, so anyways, and, and I don't want to miss what's going on because I'm so preoccupied with thinking about trying to get them that manuscript. Um, but I also don't want to not do it out of fear. And so I just feel very trepidatious and very like, Lord, just let me um, keep my gaze fixed firmly on you and not um, not be preoccupied with this USB stick in my pocket um, <laughs> or how to get it into the right hands, but also, um, but also not missing the opportunity if he provides one. And even that kind of terrifies me a little bit, you know. I think it'd be a lot easier if I was just supposed to go make friends with them. I have an easy time, <laughs> right? I have an easy time passing my manuscript off to famous authors. So, well, and can I can I say something to that? So, number one, awesome, great job on finishing your manuscript and for saying yes to a big scary conference because that is awesome. So, I have two thoughts there. One is, well, I'll say for me. Here's what often happens for me is I'll get an opportunity and I assume I know where that opportunity is going. Mm -hmm. I assume yeah. that it means this is going to happen then this, then this, then this, then this. Uh -huh. And yes, maybe that is exactly what God has for you is to pass off that manuscript to them. And that mm -hmm. is entirely possible. And if it is, I guarantee you, he's going to give you those opportunities. And all you're going to have to do is say yes in that moment, scared and awkward, say yes. But it's also possible he may not give you that opportunity. And, and it just means you had the opportunity to finish your manuscript. Mm -hmm. and you had the opportunity to go to this conference and make connections with these people. And who knows what other opportunities he's going to open. So my mm -hmm. encouragement to you is you've already said yes to finishing mm -hmm. the manuscript and to going to the workshop. And the rest is truly in God's hands. And he is going to open those opportunities. And all you have to do is show up and say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I've been thinking along those same lines too. And like, it might even be that I meet somebody else. That's the person that I'm supposed to yeah. give it to. And I got it ready in, in my pocket or my purse or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I think I'm also scared that I will not, um, <clears throat> that I won't remember that uh, or that I'll have to fight to remember that the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just miss the joy of being there. Um, because I'm constantly overthinking and I don't want to overthink it or, um, you know, I don't know, but yeah, but thank you. Cause that's kind of what, exactly what the Holy spirit has been reminding me of. Um, except for that. I haven't even thought like that rudimentary actually it's been like, well, maybe I'm just supposed to have it for somebody else. And the Lord, um, just reminded me like, no, maybe we were just supposed to have it. <laughs> Like duh, I'm like thanks, Melissa, because I was kind of annoyed. I hadn't gone that far in my thinking. <laughs> well, you have a community of people that will be praying for you, and that's yes. for sure, because that is such a wonderful opportunity. I hope it's just very surprisingly joyful. All yeah. of the ways that you connect with people, I think that would be really yeah. great. And also, there's going to be like 59 other writers there that I would like to like. I don't want to miss everybody else in the room just because I'm thinking about those two, like I, there's all of these other people that do the same thing that I do with their life and, um, and have callings and, and things that it'd be really a good place to make friends, you know? Mm -hmm. So, when I would exciting. say one of the things to you, you added was that they were doing you a favor. I would suggest that you take multiple copies and give them to anyone you think would be blessed by reading it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then it's not a matter of like, oh, I have to get it into the right hand. It's like, this person would genuinely be blessed by what I've written and I want to freely give it to them. Yeah. Knowing that it's not polished, but it's still beautiful and it's worth reading. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. Thank you. That's great advice. Yeah. I have 10 USB sticks. So oh, wow. you're ready. A good start. <laughs> You're all blank right now. <laughs> on my computer, not on the USB sticks. So it's your backup and your backup and your backup and your backup. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I need to keep one of them. But. I love it. All right, guys, we are nearly out of time, but does anybody else have a question for Kara or something they would like to share before we wrap it up today? 
Kara, I was just wondering the 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 discernment of knowing whether you're being pushed out of your comfort zone or whether you it's a it's a discipline to say to say no like like how do you decide when it is a good thing or 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 not you know it's not it staying within your comfort zone is not always a retreat i guess is my point so how yeah. do you discern oh wow that is such a good that is such a great question and probably we could all um, maybe speak into that. I think um, the first thing that comes to my mind now in the stage of life I'm in is um, talking that over with my husband. You know, if there's something that um, is going to cause me to greatly step out of my comfort zone. Now, I don't mean like just, you know, teaching a Bible study or like doing something that is similar to what I'm doing, but maybe somewhere else or for a different group or, you know what I mean? I mean, like for a large, largely stepping out of my Bible study, I mean, my comfort zone, I would, I would talk to him. He would, I know, pray about it. Um, he would, uh, we would look and see, is this going to really, um, up, uh, you know, disrupt our family life? And is this a season that we can disrupt our family life? There are some seasons where because of what's going on within the family, we just, we know we, we can't, this is not a time for that. Um, so that, that's my first thought. My, my second thought is, um, is there is that element of peace, um, where this might feel scary yet. I just, I, I know I'm supposed to, to do it. You know, there's that peace that comes from the Lord. Um, and then for me, the third piece of it would be looking into why may I not be willing to step out of my comfort zone? Because usually that answer is enough to reveal to me if, if that is, um, focused on me and it's, it's all my fears and my doubts and all me, 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 or, or, or not, you know, like, so if I, if I flip the question as why wouldn't I say yes to this opportunity or why wouldn't I step out of this comfort zone? Um, if it's, if the answer is revealing my heart of, of doubt or unbelief, then I know, okay, Lord, this is you calling me here because you want to address these things in my heart. And, um, and that's what you want to (laughs) do, you know, the outcome and all that stuff that would be secondary. Like you want to address my heart and, and stretch me and cause me to become more confident in you as I know you and, and, and attest to your faithfulness even here, you know? So, um, those are the first, uh, three thoughts, I guess that come to my mind, but others may, may have something too. No, I think that covers it. <laughs> those, those, those are my questions was, is this in line with what God's doing in my life? Is this the right time? And then just seeking the wise counsel of, of people who know you well and your life well and saying, does this match up with what God's doing and, and what's happening in my life? And I appreciate too what you said, Kara, about the peace, that peace doesn't mean that you don't have doubts or it's not going to be hard or, you know, there's been many things where I, I knew I was being compelled forward by God, but it was scary and it was hard. And it was, uh, I'm not sure I want to do this, but there have been multiple times where my response to God was, I will go if you go with me, but I, I would never choose this you know, but you're choosing it for me. And so I'll say, I'll say yes. And the SH word in my house is should. So that's, that's the other thing is, is this a should that someone else is placing on you? Mm. Or is this an invitation from God to do something with him? Those are two very different things. Yeah. So that's so good. Yeah. I, I read somewhere um, one time, every time you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. You know, if, if I say yes, like even, even anything, whether it's in my comfort zone or not, but for this context, if it's out of my comfort zone, what am I saying no to? And is that something that I should not be saying no to right now in this season of, of my yeah. life or my family? So, yeah, I think that's a great question. And that's, and we'll, and 
we're going to look a little bit into those kind of things on on Thursday um, mm -hmm. when when we kind of break down a little bit more about what what this whole comfort zone thing is and um, why is it good mm -hmm. to get out of <laughs> when when well, is the Lord when is the Lord leading yeah. when is the Lord leading we'll have to qualify that yeah <laughs> yes that is the perfect wrap up so thank you guys for showing up today thank you Kara for sharing your heart you. and your stories behind this and why this is important and then please join Kara on Thursday at one o'clock Eastern time and she is going to take the deep dive into all things <laughs> all right. comfort zones. So all things thank you guys. <laughs> thank y'all for showing all right. up. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Bye guys.